Okay, so today we start with gas tungsten arc welding. We have been continuing with the different methods of welding. Obviously, we will be highlighting only the welding techniques which are suitable or applicable in the so called marine construction field. Right. There are various types of welding methods. Naturally, we will not go in details of all those methods. We will only look into those are uh, suitable for our purpose. So, today we will look into gas tungsten arc welding, uh, which is also referred to as uh, GTAW in short, and popularly also at times it is referred to as TIG, TIG, tungsten arc welding. Right. This GTAW is more universally accepted abbreviation. However, TIG is also used. So, as you can see the name gas tungsten arc welding, here you have a the welding torch essentially is uh, schematically it is somewhat like this. That means, you have a tungsten electrode and the job which is being welded. So, the arc is struck between the tungsten electrode and a separate filler metal is put. That means, a filler electrode is put. So, you have the power supplied to the job and the tungsten electrode. This is your non consumable tungsten electrode. Obviously, it is the difference between the other welding processes which we have seen. seen. The difference is that here the electrode is a non consumable one, the tungsten that means it continues. So, the <coughs> arc is struck between the electrode and the job in that heat it fuses the metal as well as the filler metal which is put to do the to get the proper fusion and the metal deposition. Right. So, and the shielding is done by means of by injecting inert gas such that you have this uh, that is how it protects there is a inert gas is uh, put and generally in this case inert gases used are um, well argon or helium or it can be mixture of them generally argon or helium or a mixture of them like we have seen in gas metal arc welding there even CO2 is used carbon dioxide, but here it is purely uh, I mean not those active gas like CO2, but argon and helium. So, what we see uh, in, 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 in this gas tungsten arc is that here the heat for fission as we have already talked about fission is generated from an arc between the non consumable tungsten electrode and the base metal. See, it is a non consumable electrode. Till now, we have seen the electrode itself is consumed, that means the electrode itself acts as the filler metal, but here electrode is not as a filler metal, it is somewhat similar to analogous to gas welding. As if in gas welding, what you have? You have a heating torch wherein you have the, the by burning the gas, you get the heat. Here, having the similar kind, I, I mean, a torch where it has a tungsten electrode and the arc is struck between the electrode and the job. In that arc, that is the heat that is somewhat equivalent to gas flame as if that melts the metal and as well as the filler metal and welding is done. Though it is referred to as non consumable electrode, but in true sense it is not means there is a slow consumption of tungsten takes place. Obviously, ideally it should be 0 that means, why tungsten electrode because that withstands the temperature because tungsten's melting point is around 3500 degree centigrade 3500 approximately. So, you control the heat such that it does not attain that temperature, but still there is a small always a consumption of tungsten takes place and thereby after certain hours of usage you may have to change the electrode. 
but obviously that is not a good sign from the point of view tungsten getting consumed and secondly if it is getting consumed means where it is going it's essentially going into the weld metal and that is also not good for the weld metal that will be a some kind of inclusion foreign body inclusion taking place in the weld deposit so that is also not good that means the process should be such that tungsten consumption in fact should not happen how that can be restricted by restricting the heat being generated that means undue high temperature the tungsten electrode should not attain a undue high temperature so in fact this welding torch also have a uh, circulating water um, i mean cooling mechanism by circulating water through it such that the tungsten electrode always kept in a I mean the heat is taken out whatever he, uh, through the conduction heat is going into it it is taken out that is one aspect and then we will see the polarity whether we keep it positive or negative that also you know the heat generation changes right. The filler, filler metal obviously will be will be of course the uh, whatever best metal is being welded depending on that the filler metal will be the composition of the suppose they are welding a steel a certain type of steel so filler metal also will have similar composition no 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 yeah 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 here 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 it is it is again a process which is uh, essentially a manual process manual process means you go on feeding the filler metal in one hand in another hand you have the torch so it's a slow process it's not a very fast high deposition process right it's not a high deposition process it's something like the shielded metal arc welding wherein you are giving the filler metal in a manual process right manual metal arc welding in a manual process difference here is there the electrode itself was getting consumed getting melted and deposited here that electrode is held separately right and also difference is the well the shielding is being done by a inert gas so the primary advantage in this is that uh, this method can be used to, for very precision welding this method can be used where you need to deposit very small amount that means thinner thinner gauge material the sheet material if you have to weld uh, there this gas tungsten arc welding works very well because here you can use literally much lower level of current so less heat is generated so thereby the control on the deposit is much more uh, much more precise control can be achieved right and also with this method since you are using only inert gas like argon or helium so it can be used for welding of several other uh, ferrous and both non ferrous materials also anyway so here what we see the inert gas is used for shielding the uh, as a shielding medium for both the arc as well as the molten pool right and that shielding gas also prevents the electrode from getting exposed to the atmospheric oxygen because tungsten electrode also gets oxidized very readily at that high temperature if it comes in contact with oxygen so the uh, welding nozzle is designed in such a fashion that the flow of inert gas should be such that it will shield provide a proper shield to the because here you see the metal transfer is not from the electrode is from the filler metal right but also we will have to shield the electrode tungsten electrode because the otherwise the tungsten electrode will get oxidized right so here we see the shielding gas also protects the electrode uh, at that prevailing high temperature otherwise it will get oxidized all right argon or helium is used as the primary shielding medium right so what are the operating variables operating variables as you can see they are the arc voltage, welding current, welding speed, welding speed means speed of movement of the torch, not speed of uh, feeding of the filler, 
movement of the torch that is the welding speed right. Then obviously, shielding gas because depending on type of shielding gas your uh, uh, heat generation or the property of the plasma changes the arc plasma. Then obviously, the electrode type means the tungsten electrode type what type of tungsten electrode. Here uh, the direction of welding does not uh, make much difference because because he, here uh, uh, what is happening is uh, by changing the direction of welding the uh, fusion pattern we have seen that that changes either it has a wider fusion on the top or a narrower fusion means wider bit profile or narrow bit profile. Little bit of uh, variation in the depth of penetration also could be achieved, but here that is not very important because the uh, filler metal is separately fed right it just gets melted and gets deposited there. So, and uh, uh, that means orientation of the electrode does not make much difference right. Of course, here uh, one aspect I have not written that is the polarity of the electrode, polarity of the electrode is also important. Well, the welding current this is obviously in, in all welding processes primarily the welding current is one of the most important parameter because of the simple reason that that generates the heat there is the prime mover for the heat heat generation. So, deep penetration and fast welding speeds with direct current electrode negative especially with helium as the shielding gas. That means, if one wants to achieve a deeper penetration that means, comparatively thicker material when welding is done for thicker material it is always preferable that direct current electrode positive electrode negative is used generally for thicker material. we will see is that DC E n is the preferred mode of power supply. For the simple reason in this mode electrode does not get heated up of overheating of electrode does not take place. Whereas, DC E n E p overheating of electrode will take place why what happens is suppose if we see schematically this is one situation this is the say other situation here I am keeping the electrode negative and the job positive just the reverse right. All other parameters remaining constant what we will find the heat generation in the electrode will be more that means, if I write it as Q electrode and heat here electrode negative electrode positive. So, we will always see that Q electrode positive will be higher than Q electrode negative. if the electrode is connected to the negative pole negative terminal that means, if we have a direct current power supply which generally is used for welding we have seen that direct current power supply is preferable to alternating current. For the simple reason you have a continuous flow of current that means, it is not in alternating current what happens you have a positive cycle you have a negative cycle in between there is a 0. So, so, in real sense the arc gets extinguished. So, there is a continuously variation of heat and continuous variation of heat means variation of metal deposition. So, that is how direct current power sources are more preferable right. So, if there is direct current then you have two options that you can either make the electrode negative or you can make the electrode positive. Also, it has been observed that if you have electrode negative then more heat is generated in the plate right in the job which is being welded. If it is reversed 
then more heat is generated in the electrode. So, even there can be a difference in the fusion, I think we have talked about it in our previous classes. So, fusion pattern the depth of penetration also will be different, <coughs> because here less heat is generated. Why this happens? Because, uh, because the bombardment of the electrons, the flow of current in this case the uh, the flow of electron is from the negative terminal to the positive terminal right so the as if the electrons they come and hit the plate so there is a more heat generated here the opposite thing is happening electrode electrons are hitting the tip of the electrode so more heat is generated right so that is how uh, as you can see with dc en you have more penetration in the plate. So, thicker material, but if you are welding a thinner gauge material, then it is preferred DC EP, DC EP for thinner gauge, because otherwise it may melt through thinner material, right. So, and also for deep penetration means if you use helium that generates more heat because it is uh, because with, with uh, helium you will have more concentrated heat in the plasma column that leads to even deeper penetration compared to argon right. Well, so that is what we see that is the general well feature as far as the uh, gas tungsten arc welding is concerned. Now, we see for welding of aluminum just now we have been talking about we generally use DC direct current sources, but here we see for aluminum AC is used right AC is there is a very uh, specific reason for it. Why? because it provides a cathodic cleaning of the weld pool. Why AC is used? Because what happens is when aluminum is welded on the surface it has aluminum oxide. So, aluminum oxide has to be removed before welding, but in real life situation what happens? Uh, literally it is uh, wire brush to remove it, but whatever you remove aluminum being very active material it gets oxidized very fast right. That means, always there is a thin fine layer of oxide remaining there. So, whenever you are welding that that oxide does not melt. So, that goes as a that that go in the weld deposit as impurity right. Now, if that can be kind of uh, some cleaning action means by cleaning action means you take it out from the molten pool right take it out from the molten pool that happens if you have a that is what is referred to as cathodic cleaning that means if the electrode can be made positive and the job negative the aluminum plate which is being welded make it negative then that cathodic cleaning takes place through by means of so called sputtering right that's what it says that provides a this AC power provides a cathodic cleaning action of, uh, of the weld pool and removes the refractory oxides. So, welding of aluminum magnesium right it causes ref refractory oxide means oxide which have a very high melting point right. With AC to have sputtering effect again argon has to be used as shielding gas. So, for aluminum welding in fact, when if aluminum is to be welded like in ship building or in marine construction you have primarily steel and then some part of aluminum is also there are aluminum fabrications right aluminum hull or aluminum superstructure. So, aluminum welding is quite uh, uh, quite quite common in ship building. So, there we will have to use AC power supply AC power supply why? because of this cathodic cleaning action, because to achieve best cathodic cleaning action, if you have to as you can see the name cathodic 
cleaning action. That means, the best cleaning would have taken place if I could have kept the job as cathode right, and the electrode as anode and do the welding then what happens then you have that problem if if that means if i use a dc power source make cathode uh, the uh, electrode positive the job negative then i have a very good cathodic cleaning that means removal of those aluminum oxide layer becomes very effective so from that point of view a dc power source with this configuration is very good but then the problem will be the electrode will get heated up in the process that will get he, I mean after a little bit of welding electrode will get heated up uh, much heavily right and then electrode consumption will take place means the uh, tungsten vaporization will take place and tungsten contamination will come in the well deposit. On one hand it will help this configuration will help to remove the aluminum oxide that means so called to remove the Al 2 O 3 from the molten metal, it will come out as a dross, as a slag right, as a slag on the top. This Al 2 O 3 will come out as a slag on the top, which can be removed later after the welding is over. So, with this that removing action will be good, but unfortunately your tungsten electrode will get heated up and thereby tungsten contamination will take place. So, this is the compromise that means, what is done is, if I have this configuration now that means, the electrode negative and the job positive, then your tungsten contamination reduces, right, electrode heating is reduces. Again, if I continue with this uh, electrode negative, then removal of L 2 O 3 becomes very poor, that is why A C. That means, you make use of both, you make use of both which actually is nothing but a AC power or in other words in one cycle I keep the electrode positive thereby I have a good cleaning this cathodic cleaning action. In the next cycle I keep the electrode negative thereby I cool it instead of getting the instead of having the electrode continuously positive it will go on getting heated up. So, in one cycle it is getting heated up, the next cycle it is getting cold, thereby there is a balance is maintained. That is why aluminum welding a AC power is used, that is the reason, right. AC power is used with argon as shielding gas, right. So, that is what we see the sputtering why argon? Because if I use helium, then this whole aspect of sputtering does not take place. Why it does not take place? Those are somewhat beyond our scope. As a user, we know that if I use helium instead of argon, then that cleaning action will not be proper. That is the end result. So, for this, so aluminum welding, it is always, it is preferable to have, I will not say always, but it is preferable to have a AC power source with argon as the shielding medium. So, and uh, in case of manual, I mean th this whole process can be automated also, but very rarely that automated gas tungsten arc welding is used. So, in manual always argon is used. Polarity, here the polarity we have already talked about that as we can see that almost always DC E n that means, electrode negative is used in, 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 in uh, all cases. I mean wherever we use a for steel welding right, when we if gas tungsten arc is being used for welding of steel, then obviously, the question of that uh, sputtering or cathodic cleaning does not arise. So, there we go for a DC power source, there we go for DC power source that means, since why DC power source? Because we, we take the continuous benefit of keeping the electrode negative, because here you always have some, some overheating is taking place, because half the cycle it is going positive right. 
So, for steel welding, it is always, always you keep electrode negative, but again if the metal becomes too thin, then we go for electrode positive. Then if you say then what is happening in that case? Answer is simple because when you are welding a thinner gauge material, your normal heat input is much low, right. So, the electrode getting overheated that question is not there, right. <coughs> so, what you see that with direct current electrode negative approximately 70 percent of the heat generated at the plate whereas 30 percent at the electrode that is the kind of total heat distribution because the total heat is nothing but voltage into current that is remaining constant whether I am keeping the electrode positive or electrode negative right total heat that is Q that is nothing but essentially the total power being consumed and it is this is the total power being consumed voltage into current in the welding circuit whatever current is flowing and whatever is the arc voltage. So, that gives me the total con power consumption and that gets converted into the heat through this plasma action of the arc column. Now, distribution of this heat depending on electrode polarity is something like this that with DC E n 70 percent of the heat is on the plate that means at the anode and 30 percent in the electrode. For a given current a deeper penetration is achieved with DC E n obviously for the same current like we have seen for the same current with DC E n you have a deeper penetration whereas with the DC E p lesser penetration because less heat, heat is generated in the plate. Well, here we see with DC E p is uh, for sheet metal welding cathodic cleaning action takes place at the surface of the work piece. Oh, here uh, we have talked about once again about the what is this cathodic cleaning it is nothing but it is important for welding of aluminum and magnesium right removes the oxides with AC power source this action DC uh, uh, action of DCP and deep penetration of DCM both are achieved. Basically AC power source we take benefit of both may not be equal benefit, but benefit of both means DCP and DCEN. With uh, alternating current generally argon shielding is used for welding of aluminum. Why? These are some of the reasons that firstly you have a better arc starting because welding means you have to have a, a stable plasma column, stable arc is needed that is what is called the welding stability of the welding. If the arc is uh, arc becomes unstable then your welding will be non-uniform. Arc unstable means what? That means the arc characteristics are changing very, very frequently. Arc characteristics changing means essentially heat generation is changing. That means the fusion melting is changing. So, deposition and the fusion pattern will be very erratic, will be uneven. So, anyway that is uh, we see that with uh, argon as shielding gas it gives you a better arc starting better cleaning action and superior weld quality than that with helium as shielding gas. Helium can be used as shielding gas when you are welding steel right because that gives you a much higher heat much higher heat. So, one can go for high deposition welding even with gas tungsten generally gas tungsten arc weldings are low deposition welding why because here you have a manual feeding of electrode. So, it is essentially manual process, but if you automate the process that can be done if you mount the torch on an automatic carriage and make an arrangement of feeding of electrode like you have in the gas metal arc welding. There the electrode itself is bearing the current I, I can feed it separately also auto in automated through a feeder mechanism. So, the whole process can be automated even in gas tungsten arc welding. So, there that automated process 
if it is an automated process that means there I can go for higher current there one can go for helium as a shielding gas such that more higher current is generated uh, used higher heat is generated so higher melting and that gives you a higher deposition rate that or vo voltage this arc voltage as you can see obviously is dependent again on other variables like welding current shape of the tungsten electrode tip distance between electrode tip and workpiece type of shielding gas that means what would be the arc voltage that will also depend on this shape of electrode tip is the arc characteristics changes depending on the shape of the tip. Some electrode tip could be like this, some electrode tip could be a spherical one, both are tungsten electrodes right. In one case it can be a pointed one, in another case it can be blunt. So, depending on what type of electrode is being used also the extent of or voltage may be different right and obviously distance between electrode tip and work piece because the distance between electrode tip and work piece the voltage will be different for the simple reason because this is the as the arc length increases there is the distance between the tip and the job as the arc length increases you have higher voltage. So, depending on how you are holding the torch whether because here you see in gas metal arc welding we have seen cases of uh, self regulation of arc length. If you have a uh, constant potential power supply constant voltage power supply right, it will automatically maintain a constant length between the electrode tip and the job why because if I bring it too close the voltage will uh, current will increase there will be surge in the current and more tip material will melt and thereby fixing the distance bringing back the distance to the required value that is what is called self regulation. But here the question of electrode melting is not there. So, by changing the height of the torch position of the torch I can increase or decrease this value this distance distance between the tip of the electrode to the job. Now, if I increase it arc voltage increases, if I decrease it arc voltage decreases because that is arc voltage is the voltage drop across that gap. Depending on shielding gas the arc voltage will change right depending on shielding gas because because of that uh, uh, I mean the uh, because of the characteristics of the uh, uh, concerned shielding gas whether it is a helium or, uh, or 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 argon depending on their ionization potential right. So, what we see that the oil pool width remains almost unchanged before the arc length reaches a certain value what does that mean because we have already talked about the effects of welding parameters in the uh, one of the general effect of welding parameter general effect of arc voltage on the deposition pattern is like this. Um, if you have a very I mean if you if you if you have a longer arc right then the uh, very if we draw it in a little exaggerated fashion what I have to have tried to do of course is somewhat exaggerated that is when I have a higher arc voltage and here I have a much lower arc voltage the arc length is very high arc length is very small if you have a high arc length you have a wider bit profile 
the fusion at the top is wider. Once that happens, obviously your penetration also will be less. Actually, it should be somewhat like this. Penetration in the metal will be less. Whereas, you have a short arc length, your uh, bead profile also will be narrower and penetration would be deeper. Why? For the simple reason, the same heat is there. So, more heat is getting conducted below, right. So, here what he meant to say that the whirlpool width remains almost unchanged before the arc length reaches a certain value. That means, it does not mean that I go on increasing the arc length, it will go on becoming wider and wider. No, definitely not, that is obvious. Beyond a certain arc length, it will arc will become unstable, simply arc will extinguish, right. <coughs> And here in this case, in the tungsten electrode welding, there is also another phenomena that beyond a certain value, the pull width again will start shrinking. That means, beyond a certain value, if I take it further up, this is of course, we are drawing with a much exaggerated, then it, 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 sorry, it is not. Anyway, let me draw on this side. So, here in this case, I have further increased the arc height or the arc length. So, what it says that beyond a certain certain arc length, again arc will start getting narrower, it becomes narrower. That means, to start with as the arc length is short, you have a narrow bead. As you go on increasing the arc length, the bead becomes wider you further you increase the arc length, then again it narrows down. That means, beyond a certain critical value, the increasing arc length pull width will start decreasing. That, that is the thing what happens. So, once the arc length exceeds the critical value, the arc spread begins to concentrate. So, if this is my say critical length, if I increase beyond that, then the arc spread starts getting concentrated and the backside bead width becomes larger, means the bead width at the back or in other words it gives a more narrower fusion and more deposition going at the, uh, uh, that, that means uh, uh, with this length increasing means your uh, this becomes narrow, the bit width becomes narrow, the fission increases and you have a over reinforcement, over deposition at the bottom of the plate. These are some of the peculiar phenomena uh, phenomenon that take place in case of tungsten arc welding. Now, on the contrary, if the welding arc is too short, right, just the reverse of it is becoming too short, then there is a chance of short circuiting the electrode to the molten pool. When I am making shorter and shorter, then there is a possibility of short circuiting. Obviously, if it short circuits means the tungsten electrode touches the weld metal. So, that is uh, obviously the uh, welding process will stop because there will be certain drop in the cu current because of the short circuit, certain drop in the heat generated. So, welding process will stop and at the same time the electrode will get damaged because then it is a different phenomena. The electrode will have aluminum contamination. Suppose you are welding aluminum, it is more, more so in case of aluminum welding. If there is a chance by chance you short circuit it, there is a aluminum contamination. So, that is why another aspect is there. How do you start the uh, welding? It is by striking a arc. So, every time you strike means you physically touch the metal plate. So, with a tungsten electrode touching the aluminum means some bit of aluminum contamination is taking place in the electrode tip as well as the at that location 
aluminum is getting contaminated with tungsten. So, both ways it happens that means, every time you start a, a welding process you start the arc there can be a case of small contamination in the plate which is being welded and also the electrode gets contaminated. In most applications other than those involving sheet metal the desired arc length should be as short as possible. That is another general rule that you see here it has been mentioned other than those involving sheet metal that is when by sheet metal what do you mean we are referring to thinner gauge material say 1 millimeter 2 millimeter thick sheets if you are welding that then it is preferable to have little wider little longer arc length why because if you have shorter arc length the penetrating effect is more the depth of penetration increases with shorter arc length. So, if depth of penetration increasing means there will be a possibility of cutting through the metal. So, when a thinner gauge material it is preferable to have a rather longer uh, arc length otherwise it is as short as possible. Then welding speed obviously, welding speed of course, is uh, one of the important parameter because this determines the productivity that is one of the important aspect because the speed apart from anything else it determines your productivity. So, you see in a production process in a production process if we see the interest of the so called management the shipyard owner or one who is sort of responsible for the overall production he will be interested only in productivity to know what is happening how much production is taking place because he will take it for granted that it is as per quality because quality has to be maintained obviously maintaining quality what is the rate of production that is what is important that means how much productivity or uh, i mean what is the level of productivity higher the productivity more efficient the process is more profitable the intervention is right so the speed is that particular parameter which refers directly to productivity because faster you can weld more your production rate right so, that way it is one of the very important parameter in a welding process. So, naturally one would like to increase the speed of production. So, what happens if the, the what you see that the welding speed influences both penetration and weld pull width. It has effect on both the penetrating effect how much it will fuse through in the metal depth as well as what would be the pull width. So, effect is more pronounced on molten pool dimensions than that on penetration, though it affects both the uh, both your fusion depth right as well as your uh, as well as on the width in both these aspects, but the effect is more pronounced in the fusion width effect is more pronounced. <coughs> Actually what happens I mean from common sense one one can see that if the welding speed is decreased then it will give rise to increasing weld width. as well as increasing welding depth right as the welding speed is decreased welding speed decreased means what you are holding the heat at a point for a longer time. So, you are allowing in that case you are holding the heat at a 
in one place for a longer time means you are allowing the heat to flow in all, all direction for a longer period. So, we expect a more wider and more deeper fission, but in reality what happens is as you go on reducing the speed, as you go on reducing the speed, it will happen in fact like this. That means the whatever well let me take as by here the Q is going, so it will penetrate like this. That means this increase so much will not take place. Always we see that the more heat will flow across in transversely than in the down uh, than in the thickness direction. What is the reason? Reason is what happens as the heat is flowing because as you have the heat source on the surface of the plate, obviously it will it will flow equally in all direction. This is my plate surface. I am applying some heat. It will flow across the depth and transversely, radially in all direction. What will be the effect? Immediately. I mean if we can take a in a, in a so called nanosecond basis what is happening, we will find first a small molten pool will form, then gradually this molten pool will go on extending like this. Otherwise or in other words these are my melting temperature isotherms, these are basically the isotherm and here we are drawing the melting temperature isotherm means the, the, this is my boundary of the molten metal to the solid metal. If it is still say this is the 1500 degree isotherm. Right. So, what will happen? This will keep growing in this fashion. Why it is growing in this fashion? Because and, and beyond, beyond a certain point it will not further grow in the thickness direction because here it will be all molten metal. right? And the heat conductivity or the conduct thermal conductivity of molten metal drastically reduces. If we see the variation of thermal conductivity with temperature, one can see that the thermal conductivity at room temperature of steel it is at some lower level. As the temperature rises, it increases. Then beyond a certain point, again it starts decreasing. The thermal conductivity it varies with temperature and the thermal conductivity is sufficiently low at molten temperature at melting point temperature of steel. So, the flow of heat, heat conduction will be less, there is a simple reason. Heat conduction that means the molten metal will act as a kind of a insulator as if as a kind of a cushion which will cushion the heat flow, which will insulate the uh, parent metal, the solid metal below from further melting. Thereby the fission that means the, uh, that is why it says that it has a more pronounced effect right, uh, on, on, the, on the whirlpool width than on the penetration. So, by decreasing welding speed, we do not so, if you have to increase fusion depth, if you have to increase penetration, then welding speed should not be reduced. That is the ultimate, I mean net, uh, uh, net result, net lesson what we get is the for controlling the depth of fusion, welding speed is not the parameter, right. It will have a rather if you have to increase the depth and also as you go on reducing the speed, what will then happen? If I go on feeding the electrode, obviously in gas tungsten arc welding that we can control because feeding and movement they are independent. So, if you go on feeding it, you will have a higher deposition at the top, right. Yes, yes. I mean all these, all these are obviously, this does not mean that you just keep on holding the torch at one place, 
it will go on melting no again a steady state condition will come because what is happening when I am reducing the welding speed means what essentially the maximum reduction is what making the speed 0 right if I say I am reducing the welding speed how much I can reduce it I can make it 0 that means I hold the torch at one place. So, continuous heat is going on the arc is on continuous heat is going on. So, what will happen in that case? Suppose if I see a plan view say this is a plan view I am having the torch perpendicularly like this. So, instantaneously if I can go on taking photographs suppose if that is possible I will find instantaneously there will be small weld pool will form right means a molten metal pool will form forget about feeding of electrode just the heat torch is there gradually this will increase that means the diameter of the molten pool will increase now how much it will increase obviously it will not go on increasing infinitely no definitely not why because what is essentially happening here this is my cross section this view this is the molten pool which has formed. So, whatever heat is going in whatever heat is coming here. So, it is getting conducted right it is getting conducted in all direction similarly it is getting conducted in all direction. So, at one point in time it will attain a steady state means also getting radiated con convection cooling all these things are happening. So, whatever it is going on it is getting distributed. So, a certain width of pool will be there it will not go on extending beyond point is the effect will be more pronounced in this direction than in this direction that is the point effect is more pronounced on the heat flowing across the plate than along the depth of the plate that is what that means if we go on reducing the speed then whirlpool width will increase this will increase the width of the bid compared to the depth of the bit that is what is the main point. So, with decreasing weld speed here we have summarized the weld pool gets enlarged weld pool length becomes larger and the rear of the pool becomes sharper there is nothing but this is in the static condition that means you are holding the electrode at one position otherwise the electrode if you move the electrode along this then then it will become it will become sharper here is the arc right. So, the pool length becomes larger and the rear of the pool becomes sharper. <coughs> that means, welding speed obviously you have to decide on as I said the primary aspect is it talks about productivity. So, always the objective would be how we can keep the speed high, but obviously you, you go on increasing the speed means what I do not give enough time for the heat to flow here what I am saying I am giving time the, for the heat to flow in all direction. If I do not give time then the fusion zone will be very small it will not achieve the desired fusion. So, that is how all the parameters in fact all parameters are interrelated thereby you will have to achieve also you will have to achieve the entire fusion at the same time you will have to see that overheating is not taking place excess heat is not going in the plate right all these aspects. So, what are the utility of this process? is specially useful for welding reactive and refractory metals by refractory means well magnesium alloys aluminum alloys right <coughs> this is specially useful 
and welding stainless steel organ is recommended for manual welding up to thickness of 12 millimeter. Beyond that helium basically what he meant by this that means stainless steel if you want to weld stainless steel is what? It is a high nickel high chromium alloy high chromium alloy. So, if it is high chromium alloy then it becomes difficult because it is carbon equivalent becomes very high. So, you weld by conventional means it may crack right. So, gas tungsten arc welding is often used for welding of stainless steels, but as you see for manual welding up to around 12 millimeter thick plates argon is recommended. Otherwise, you go for helium or go for argon helium mixture like for thick sections argon helium mixtures or even pure helium can be used to obtain increased weld penetration. But as you go for helium pure helium then it is preferable to have a automated welding process with uh, AC and with. Uh, so, in, in this methods when you are welding steel then generally one go, goes for this direct current electronegative process, but for aluminum you go for AC right. With the generally argon shielding gas for welding of aluminum because it provides better arc starting, better cleaning action and superior weld quality than with helium as the shielding gas. That is interesting that in aluminum it is preferable argon because it has another additional business to do cleaning action because of the refractory oxides. In any case gas tungsten arc welding is not heavily used as you can see as far as uh, steel welding or marine construction is concerned. It is mostly used wherever there is a aluminum fabrication ok. Well that is all we will next look into submerged arc welding.